The purpose of this exercise is to improve the strength and control of your hip and leg loading. It primarily strengthens one leg, but requires full body input to properly activate your hamstrings, glutes, and core. It has the same fundamental movement patterns you developed in the earlier squatting exercises, but demands a lot more strength and control. I am demonstrating this exercise without any support, but it is best to start with one or two hands on a countertop to help balance you as you develop the form and strength. Please ensure that you have completed the squats and one leg stand plus hip flexion exercises before progressing to this one. Start by paying attention to your right foot. The goal of the movement is to keep your balance evenly over top of your right foot. Slowly reach your left leg backward and trace the floor with your left big toe. Proportionately as your left leg moves backward, your upper body should bow forward as one unit so that you could draw a straight line from your left heel right up to your ear. You should effectively counterbalance so that your weight remains strongly over top of your right foot and your right leg is doing all of the work. This position is effectively a one leg squat. You have loaded your leg up and are ready to drive out of this position using your quads, hamstrings, glutes and core all together. When you have squatted down 95% of your weight should be on your front leg and foot and your back toe is just touching down for balance. Your hip, knee and ankle are all flexed and locked and loaded and ready to drive you back up to straight. Engage your core and use your leg to push the floor away from you as you drive your head up to the ceiling. Your goal is to keep your torso in a neutral position and have your torso, hip, knee and ankle all come to straight at the same time. Your opposite knee will flex up to 90 degrees so you will become a really easy stick man to draw. Repeat this movement 5 to 10 times each leg, with mental focus remaining on staying balanced over top of your foot. Remember that 2 repetitions done well are better for you than 10 done poorly. This exercise will expose most of your weaknesses and muscle imbalances, and it can be very easy to cheat, so watch out for the following compensations. Avoid staying too upright and stepping right back onto the back leg. Remember that 95% of your weight should stay over top of the front foot. Avoid flexing or extending in your trunk as you bend. You need to use your core to lightly brace your torso and keep it in a neutral position as your leg starts the work of lowering your body over top of your foot. Ensure that you engage your butt and upper hamstring to keep your back leg reaching strongly back through the whole movement. Imagine your back leg is on a track extending straight backwards as you sink down. This will help prevent you from jutting your hip out and bending your torso sideways as the movement demands more strength. Remember the feeling of driving your hips up and forward that you learned in the two leg squat exercises. This should be the same feeling. You sink your body down into your hip under control and then use some power to push your pelvis up and forward out of it. People that are very back and quad dominant will tend to straighten their knee independent of straightening their whole body. Remember the goal is to use more of your upper hamstring and butt to coordinate your torso, hip, knee and ankle to move all together. If you are having trouble with this exercise, practice a few kneeling squats and two leg squats to feel how the movement is similar. If you feel that you just aren't strong enough to do this properly, try only going down about 50% as far, but keep all the same principles of the movement. Strength will come as you develop the coordination. 
Repeat this exercise five to ten times each leg as you can maintain good form. Once you feel you have mastered this exercise, please look for the one leg squat to jump exercise.